environmentally uh, one emerging trend which I think we can also touch base upon today is the media and people from that aspect because that is something that is changing the way how consumers are interacting and how brands are you know taking value out of a consumer's needs and requirements and different digital customers. You know, trust is the factor that is affecting most of the purchases today, which is true. But another interesting, uh, uh, it's a, again a piece of research that uh, most of the trust today is crowdsourced. Yeah. Now when I say crowdsourced, today when you want to watch a movie, you go to book my show, you go to IMDb, you look at the total number of average score that the movie has. You want to order a pizza, you go to Zomato, you look at a restaurant, and you look at the rating that the restaurant is for. You are looking at buying products, like I am a customer of Bob's skincare, right? <laughs> amazing product, amazing stuff. The reason why I ended up buying it in the first place is because of the total number of reviews that I saw on Amazon with 4 star ratings, 5 star ratings. And the number of reviews that I saw with negative ratings to understand what other people are facing as a negative. Uh, Did you know that that, uh, uh, that promoter that store? Promoter store. Uh, so the, the whole yeah. reviews yeah. ecosystem is now in the public domain. In fact, if you are looking for a job, every company has a rating. You will end up joining the company or not joining the company based on the reviews you see online. Right. Every single thing, everything that we do in our life today, every brand association that we have, our trust on the brand is a lot dependent on what the crowd is saying, what everyone else is saying. And the, 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 the advantage or disadvantage of internet that everything is now open and accessible. Unless you are really good, unless you are doing really good stuff, somebody out there will call you out and then everyone else will call you out. And you will have that distance. So today, the, an important part of what you do is also that how users talk about you on the digital platforms. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, fundamentally the customer journey uh, has changed pre or post pandemic. It has changed pre or post, pre or post pre data that Geo started giving us, right? Uh, the, the, it, it's a fact that the, the actual, if you look at all trends everywhere, you, you look at social media trends, you look at uh, Facebook inside reports, you look at Google trends, Google inside reports, the search trends of Google, number of search volumes on every search page out there on Google, what you will see is after the Geo launch, because data became so much more accessible and available, it was available for free. Uh, even YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, everything saw an explosion in its usage because more and more number of users were able to come online. During the pandemic, what happened is because this data was already available to these users, they were used to using the data on their mobiles and laptops and it was freely available. A large part of us also were able to work from home for like almost at a fraction of a cost. Earlier, uh, 1 GB data used to cost about 300 to 500 rupees. Today, 500 rupees means your entire month's uh, internet use is set. Right? So, it actually started then. What the pandemic did is it accelerated the use of data. And then, because you could not go out, you could not use physical stores, you could not be in touch with people physically. That led to a, a stage where today everybody is comfortable using the data. And if you look at it, even most of our meetings today are client meetings. 8 out of 10 client meetings also happen over a, a virtual call. We don't have to physically be present in the client meeting because for the last 3 years that's how it's been. So everybody is comfortable with that. Now having said that, what is also changing, changing in India is that every year there is a new population that is coming online. The whole, so the biggest buzzword, buzzword in the marketing industry is millennials. How do we target millennials, right? I think that millennials time has gone on. Gen Z's, Gen Z's, Gen Z's, Gen Z's, Gen Z's, Gen Z's, Gen Alpha Chalu. Now they are called Gen Alphas. And the, the entire Gen Alpha generation is constantly connected. They are always online. My three year old daughters, both of them are online 24 by 7. As soon as they wake up, the first thing they do is they take their, take their mobile out and go on YouTube. As soon as we take their mobile off, they go, go to the TV and say, uh, open YouTube. They press the mic button and say, open YouTube. So they are constantly connected. Now in this age, what is going to happen is that the 
trend is there that people are going to consume content, content on the internet. Now, as brands, it's, it's for the brands to decide how we want to tap into that. Whether you want to target that user when he's consuming content or you don't. In my experience, in last three years, the brands that have been able to segment their customers into different life stages of their consumers. For example, there's a guy who is like an 80 year old guy. He is the app customer for every AMSI brand today because he's just about to start his finance journey. If you tap him today and if you teach him everything he needs to know about taxation, income tax, uh, sorry, income tax, the saving money, planning for the uh, you know, life events, all of that, that customer is going to stay with you for the rest of his life. Like that, value you get. Yes. It is exactly what used to happen in the liquor industry. If you remember, you know, way back 20 years back, was seeded with the first, you know, with the whiskey or this or that and things like that, and he'll remain with it. He'll learn it, uh, you know, yeah. like that. Chocolates, like you just spoke about chocolates, right? Chocolates for our parents was something that children need. For us, it is a gift that we want to give each other, right? Yeah. For us, our generation, the easiest gift that we want to give to somebody is a box of chocolate. For a wash us 700 rupees for seven chocolates. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that is going on. So I think we with good image. Yeah, I think uh, the consumer trends is is shifting for sure. Even my father, who is a 60 year old man, he is on YouTube now. He is more on YouTube than on any any, any, any other platform. His TV user is gone now. He's following you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I think so. Yeah, the trends have definitely changed, and I think. What, and this is where again the word behavioral economics, which I spoke about, is about understanding how your consumer behaves, what they do, and then target them with very specific communication for that segment. My communication to a guy who is in the age group of 20 to 25 or 18 to 22 cannot be seen as the communication that I would probably give to a guy who is in the age of 40 to 50 years. So while digital is a platform, digital is, is, is the channel where you are communicating, what medium you use, which chat platform you use also equally equal important. For example, I was also like, I was at home, me and my brother were just having a chat and we were on Facebook, on our phones, separate phones. One of my younger uh, cousin came in, uh, he is roughly around 19 years old. He came, he looked at like, eh, millennials. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you guys are still using Facebook. We are not on Facebook anymore, we are on Instagram and Snapchat. Ah, so, that, so it's also important to understand that who your audience is, where they are, and what they are doing, and what is the mindset that they have. And if you understand that behavior, if you understand that trend, I, I think any season is a good season. We have managed to sell for an e-commerce clothing brand, which I cannot name, uh, <clears throat> the entire pandemic season. While everybody was worried because they were more into fashion than stuff, everybody was worried how do we sell more, right? You are not going out, so you don't need new clothes. Right? We understood a trend, we identified a pattern that when you are at home, you will not need new fashion or new shirts and stuff, but you will definitely need new pajamas. And then we started selling pajamas to better audience. And that led us to the back with pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> they got covered it with it. So it's the both side of product, but now they have a larger share of revenue coming from Pajama. Right. Right. Great stuff. So it is basically what you're saying is how to analyze data, how to understand data, how to look at uh, you know the behavioral patterns within segment, going through data uh, analysis and things like this. Actually, of course, we have a whole lot of digital tools that are available that will give you almost insights on an ongoing basis. Great, great stuff. Uh, fundamentally, uh, what we need to understand is that you have a certain set of audience. Now this audience comes on all kinds of platforms. Every platform has a purpose, right? Like on Instagram or Facebook, like the, the, you know people say, on Facebook you go and post, the hey, I ate a samosa. On uh, Instagram you put the picture of that samosa. On YouTube, you will put a video saying how to eat that samosa. But on Google, you will go and search where do I buy that samosa. <laughs> right. So Google or the search platform. So today, again, search is not limited to Google because there's a lot of vertical searches that happen. For example, today, if you want an insurance, you have to compare good insurance policies.
you will end up with a big policy bazaar whether you like it or not. Today you want a good shampoo, whether you like it or not, you will end up using Amazon. Now Amazon search function is a vertical search. And policy bazaar search function is a vertical search. And Google is a universal search. You keep seeing that. Right? But the whole idea is that search is going to be a significant part of everybody's life. Anybody who comes online, they're going to go and search. Now the outcome of the search results. So typically how it works is that you will either end up paying for that traffic to the platform. For example, when somebody is searching for say pizza restaurants game, right? Somebody will have to pay Google to show up in that search listing with an app. That is the idea. Now because the intent of the user is that he is looking for a pizza, that is, that is going to buy the pizza, therefore it takes all the commercial sites for every business to make payment to Google and get that traffic. The same visitor, the exact same user, can also visit your website by, by scrolling down three listings further and clicking on the organic list, which is the SEO list, right? Since 2007, I think for the next 15 years also, search is intent driven. And because it is intent driven, it will always deliver value. Now, whether you pay for that traffic or you make an effort, and SEO is not easy, it's going to take 6 to 12 months for you to show up in those results. So it's not going to be easy, but then if you consistently make that effort to, to you know, uh, make your website better, to make your content better, to make your experience better. Continuous evolution is happening. Yes. And when you do that, ultimately the user is going to discover you organically. And that's where you will start getting the same visitor for which you would end up paying, let's say, 100 rupees in click, 100 rupees in click to Google, they were getting the same visitor to your website for free. And now every search basically pays. So both the uh, you know digital and uh, classic. Market. I have worked with the jewelry brand uh, back in 2014. Uh, the brand is Vima now. The lot of scam chatter is going on that brand. Uh, one of the most interesting concepts that I heard there is that uh, a lot of their business actually came by running ads in newspapers in tier 2 tier 3 city, wherein they said, go on Google, search for us, and use this coupon code, and we will give you a discount. And that led to massive increase in their search volumes in Google. And then that led to a lot of increase in the website traffic. So, and it is quite interesting, you know, Amazon does TV ads to drive traffic to its app and to its website. Right. You don't get that kind of weight coming in. <laughs> so TV and newspaper Very are being used by uh, an e-commerce brand, an online brand. Also video your newspaper is yeah. really high. And a large number of so today automotive brands, like all the car brands, today are spending massive amount of money on digital to drive store footfalls. So that they can give test brands. So now the amalgamation is actually happening between digital and physical. That offline marketing, online marketing, you have to merge them, you don't have a choice as well. And SEO is going to basically help you merge it because the consumer, at the end of the day, no matter what you do, eventually end up searching for it. And therefore, you have to be there.